So, just to bring this session to an end and to highlight the problems with venous thromboembolism, I'd like to ask Ian Jackson, Jackson, who's there at the back, and a patient, to tell us his story and how venous thromboembolism has affected his life. Over to you, Ian. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just introduce myself, um, Ian Jackson. I'm a 52-year-old married man, married to the lovely Jane at the back. Uh, four children, four lovely grandchildren, six dogs. I work as a, a, an investment director for an IFA practice in Worcester. I've got my hobbies are, I'm a, a great lover of Leicester Tigers Rugby Club much for my sins at the moment, uh, and I also am a bit of a gym junkie at the moment as well, which I'll come on to a bit later on. But at the end of the day, sort of listening to the other speakers, I'm just an, an ordinary guy, just somebody who, eight years ago, had, and my family, a quite life-changing sort of scenario that hit us out of the blue. Effectively, um, July 2006, I experienced my first pulmonary embolism. The funny thing was, leading up to this, uh, the medical care that I received uh, was a little bit, I would say, not what you would want, uh, considering I was diagnosed with um, uh, a serious Achilles tendon um, problem, which is the swelling in my leg. Um, I was diagnosed with asthma three or four days before I collapsed with my pulmonary embolism. Uh, and I also had a scan on my leg uh, two weeks before um, I had this first pulmonary embolism that I was told showed no signs of any clots whatsoever. Um, the funny thing was, after that first diagnosis, because uh, I had no real family history of uh, this sort of thing, my mum had had uh, a few problems with the veins, I hadn't had an operation, I hadn't been flying. Um, uh, there was nothing really in my medical history that would sort of indicate why this had happened. It was, uh, we'll categorise you as get on warfarin, six months' time, you'll be okay. You, you're young enough, 45, well, I think I was young enough. Um, you're fit enough, uh, you should be okay in six months' time. Um, it didn't happen like that for me. I've, listen to the guys talk, talking uh, earlier on about reoccurrence. Uh, my first reoccurrence uh, happened in the November of 2006, three or four months uh, after my first uh, pulmonary embolism, when I experienced my second pulmonary embolism. At that stage, I think people did start to take uh, some notice, doctors especially, uh, and um, I was uh, placed on Clexin uh, for a period of time. However, back in 2006, I think the, uh, the scenario with collecting on a long-term basis, because I think people realised then there was a few issues that needed to be sorted out for myself, uh, couldn't really be um, uh, seen as, a, as, a, as something that uh, you know, I could carry on with. So, um, uh, much to my surprise, and I think my family's surprise, um, uh, in the April of 2007, I was taken off collecting and stuck back on warfarin. And the problems I experienced whilst I was on warfarin in the, from the July to the November started to uh, incur again. And that then um, uh, sort of led me to my third pulmonary embolism, which I experienced in um, uh, end of May, early June 2007. At that stage, I think things did start being, look, being looked at pretty seriously by the medical sort of uh, people that were looking after me. And my first lifesaver, as I call it, uh, was um, uh, fitted for me. Um, uh, my, my venous caver uh, filter, which, as I say, I call my life my lifesaver. Um, uh, that was fitted in the June 2007. I um, don't know much about it uh, other than that uh, it gets scanned every now and again just to see that it's in the right position, but I, I do know that at the end of the day, um, any further clots that I might experience in my legs 
won't travel up into my lungs because this thing will stop it. So, you know, I, 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 you know just to that end, I know uh, Jane at the back and the kids uh, were pretty pleased. Um, after that, I experienced five years of injecting Clexin twice a day. Uh, not a lot of fun, uh, especially when I was somebody that, after my first blood test, I collapsed in the doctor's surgery. Um, so the thought of injecting myself um, uh, at that stage was a little bit frightening. But saying that, the thought of, because um, they said Jane could inject me if, if that's what I wanted, the thought of Jane injecting me at that stage was even more frightening. Um, you know, we don't row very often, but I could just imagine it, I'd be a good dartboard if we did. So I took it on myself and uh, I had five years of, uh, of uh, injecting and five years of being reasonably comfortable. Um, yeah, it certainly was, I felt, a drug that, that, um, uh, that, that settled my legs down a hell of a lot. I felt a lot more comfortable, but clearly it had uh, other implications. In that time, I developed an hematoma uh, underneath the, 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 the swelling that I started to get in my stomach, which had to be removed in emergency operation. Um, funny when you you're sort of uh, clotting and then you bleed and stuff like that. You know, so, uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a medical expert, but um, you know, it's weird and wacky things do go on in people's bodies, as I've experienced. Um, but I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, I just felt at the end of the five years that uh, my body had just taken enough. Uh, injecting twice a day, the injection sites were really, really um, uh, uh, swelling up a lot, a lot of bruising. I was injecting into my thighs at that stage, and my life basically was 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 terrible. Uh, it's most probably the worst time uh, of the uh, of, uh, of that uh, of that time, you know, leading up to that time that, that I was experiencing, both myself and, uh, and the family. So I then come on to my second lifesaver, and uh, the gentleman speaker uh, before uh, indicated um, this drug as being one of the uh, the drugs that we should be looking at. And I think clearly, listening to, to, to that gentleman speaking, I'm one of the fortunate people because in May 2012, um, uh, I was placed on rivaroxaban. And it has changed my life. Um, uh, you no know, more injecting. It certainly seems to be a drug that, that uh, helps me, um, helps my condition. Um, I only have to go for um, uh, one blood test every, every quarter just to check that my kidney function's okay, which seems to be. So, um, uh, you know, this thing about cost and stuff like that, you know, I think we should be uh, battering the, the, the doors down of the, of the House of Commons and say, look, you know, there's hundreds of people out here who are experiencing serious problems uh, and a, a simple drug scenario can, can sort this out. As I say, I feel very, very lucky. Um, you know, I was recently scanned in my legs and the person who did the scan said she couldn't believe how, how well they looked in terms of you know, how the veins looked, uh, considering the, the, the damage that had been done in the past. Again, I don't, I'm, no, I'm no medical uh, practitioner. I don't know whether you know, rivaroxaban is the, the drug for me. I just know that as an individual, it's the most comfortable time that I've been in, in this eight years. Um, and that brings me on to you know, where I am now, eight years on. Um, I've lost uh, quite a bit of air, as you see. Um, so I don't think that's anything to do with the drugs. That's most probably the six dogs and the four grandchildren. Um, uh, but you know, I've, my, my life has turned around. And from that spell, uh, May 2012, where I couldn't even most probably get up and walk 100 yards because my body just, just wouldn't allow me to do anything uh, following that five years of injecting Calexin. Within two months of taking Rivaroxaban, I was back at the gym because I always was a, a bit of a fitness fanatic, a bit of a sportsman. I was back with my son at the gym. And then uh, May this year, um, uh, I did this really ridiculous uh, thing which my legs are still trying to, to get over. I, um, I did seven sprint triathlons in seven days to raise money for, for lifeblood. As I say, my, I... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was quite an interesting bit. That clearly was, wasn't the first day. <laughs> I was um, a bit, uh, bit 
sort of a um, bit worried after the end of the first day, how I felt. But no, that was the end of the, the last day. A lot of support from the family and stuff. But, you know, all I can say is that uh, as a patient, um, uh, you know, in the NHS system, that we have to be treated, I believe, as individuals. The anticoagulants have got to be individually based. We can't just be thrown as a, as a, as a group and say, here you go. Uh, get a bit of warfarin down, yeah, this will sort you out in six months' time, you'll be okay. You know, we've got to, the people have got to look at us and treat us as, as, as individuals. And the other thing I would say to everybody out there, be positive, my last two years, um, have, 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 you know, of the eight years, uh, have been absolutely fantastic. I feel really comfortable. Yeah, <coughs> sitting down there, the legs are, are sort of a bit sore now. But, you know, I, it's the best I've been, so all I can say is, if you are sort of in that position of, of feeling uncomfortable, feeling a bit down, hopefully there's something around the corner as there was for me. Thank you. He's obviously shy. <laughs> can I, can I, two seconds, um, yeah, I mean, it, I'm actually quite a fan of warfarin, which seems a bit controversial today. But I was going to ask you what, and I, does, I'm not meaning to be facetious, apart from the fact that you had further clots whilst you were on did you have actual problems with warfarin itself? No, no problems with warfarin uh, as a drug, other than I had to sit in a blood queue for two hours every yeah. day, waiting for my INR, and the INRs were, you know, sort of flying from one level to another level. So mm. it, was, it was the uncertainty, I think, that, that affected me. You know, nobody could explain, and they still don't know to the day, what, what's created uh, my condition. Mm. Um, uh, and I think it was going through, when somebody says to you, oh, no, in six months' time, you know, you'll be fine, and then two or, two or three months later, you know, you, you, as I say, you're sitting in blood queues uh, day in, day out, then, uh, you know, you do start to worry a lot then. Okay, well, thank you ever so much, and we will be having a further patient story after coffee. If we could break now for 15 minutes, and then we'll be back in at uh, about half past 11. Thank you. <laughs>